Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this is a digital rebar training video to show you how to build a cloud broker using Terraform. And we're going to build this from scratch. So we're going to walk through the process that I use when I'm building a new cloud broker to import Terraform. One of the things about this is that it starts from working Terraform. So I've already done the, the baseline work to build, in this case, an Oracle Cloud Terraform interface. Uh, and let me squeeze this in a little bit so you can see what we've got going. I've already got an Oracle Cloud account. I've been doing a little bit of testing to make the video run more smoothly. And I want to show you where my Terraform starts from. So I, I already have this Terraform. I'll show you what it looks like. And I've chosen to use their private key, public key uh, validation, because I think that that's a better model for what we're talking about. It's a little bit different than other uh, systems, and I've done a little background work to make this easier. But I already have a working Terraform plan going, and it's going to go ahead and run in the background. You don't need to watch that. I will show you what it looks like, though. And it's a pretty standard Terraform plan. It has required providers. It has an initialization script. So this script allows uh, that machine to connect to Digital Rebar after it comes online. It has the provider details with all the credentials and security. You'll see I'm, I've got my stuff wired in here. I'll show you how to replace that with parameters. And then it actually has the resource to build this core instance. Uh, with the display name, source details, and all those pieces, my SSH key, uh, and my init script. So these are pretty standard pieces for any cloud infrastructure. Oracle seems to have a couple more or want more uh, provider information, and we'll show you how to cope with that. Also, uh, in Oracle, you can see I've got this new machine coming, and as it's provisioned, it will, because of that instance, register into Digital Rebar. One of the things that we're also going to be showing you here is the troubleshooting process and understanding how things get built up over time. And uh, that is an important part of building it. But for now, we're going to do something very simple. We're going to create a resource broker that runs that exact plan that I just built with all the values in it uh, pre-wired. So here, you'll see I already have a couple of resource brokers, and we're going to be creating a brand new one. If I was to, say, use the Linode broker, which we'll use as a reference, and I wanted to add a new broker, the first thing I'm going to need is one of these resource profiles for Oracle. Uh, and I had built one. We're going to, it's actually just cache. So let me clear the cache and show you how that works. So now when I go back in, resource broker, uh, I'll have to remove that one. We're going to build basically a new Oracle resource broker based on the Linode cloud resource broker models. And eventually this will become part of Digital Rebar and everything I'm showing you, you'll be able to see and use as a template yourself. But that's our first starting point for building it. And let's do that work. The other thing that's important here is, is I'm not using the UX to do this building. I'm doing an infrastructure as code process. So we're going to do this the same way I would do it using my desktop and infrastructure as code. And that allows me to do changes that connect together in a very powerful way. So what I want to do here is I'm going to start from the digital rebar provision content in the cloud wrappers section here. There they are right at the top. And we need to start with this resource provision system. So we're going to start with the resource Linode cloud. That looks great. And I'm going to make a copy of it. And I'm going to call it Oracle. Excellent. And then we're going to replace all the Linodes with Oracle. No surprise here. Uh, just replace them all. That looks great. And I know Oracle wants me to fix their capitalization. There we go. And one of the things that you'll notice here is that, uh, and this is an important match for this cloud provider, we're, we use CloudInit to match the machines together. And part of doing that process means that whatever the cloud init shows, we also want to have that provider match. So this name is not actually randomly chosen. It's chosen because in that machine that I provisioned over here, did it come in? Here it is. When it registered, it actually is smart enough to identify um, that there is an Oracle. It's not doing it here because it's, it's not registering quite the right way. But it's actually going to register that there is an Oracle machine in this in this system, and uh, which is exactly what we wanted to do. I'll show you where that comes in and how those get set. 
So now that we've created this, this isn't sufficient. We actually need to come back and, and look at what we're doing. Um, here, we're instead of the token, we are using the Oracle private key. And I have done some, some work in advance that I didn't want you to have to watch me do. So I've already defined parameters that we're going to want. So there's a whole bunch of things in here, uh, including like this Oracle private key that we're going to use for credentials. So it's here. Um, it is a secure string, which is excellent. Um, we're going to have a whole bunch of other optional parameters. I'm not going to worry. We're going to have more required ones too. Base context is Terraform. We do use Terraform for this. So uh, we're going to use the uh, Cloud Terraform uh, broker. We are going to use uh, Oracle here. There is no Oracle icon, so let's clean that up. A lot of this stuff we're not going to worry about just yet. Uh, Ansible join up would let us use SSH if we couldn't do that. CloudInit, which we can do, so I'm, I'm making that false. I'll show you how we pull these values. They become important when we get into templatized Terraform. But for right now, we're just going to do a single Terraform template uh, called Cloud uh, Oracle Cloud Init Template. And so in that process, uh, I need to create a new file for this. Actually, we're, I'm going to start from the uh, Linode one, just because that's where I would normally start anyway, templates. Make sure it's in the right place, too. Uh, where's my Linode? Here's my Linode init. If you look at this file, what you'll see is it's got the same basic format, but it doesn't have any of the additional machine pieces. For our first pass, we're going to create this file, and we're going to actually use everything in this uh, Terraform as, as our starting point. So we're just hardwiring all of the components that are necessary in this system. And from there, we actually want to then substitute in things that, that to make it run. But for right now, the only thing we need to substitute in is the security. Now remember, the one on my desktop was able to look up my local key. In this case, I actually have to upload my key so it can be used. So the private key path here is the one thing we need to fix. And that is going to be set to uh, Oracle private dot pem. Oops, sorry, temp Oracle private pen. You might say, Rob, how do you know that? Let me show you. So during the process that this is provisioned, we have a, um, a file process in here that validates clouds. And, and this one's a little bit weird. Um, cloud validate that goes through and uh, makes sure that we have the critical information for each cloud. I've already done some homework here for Oracle, and because of this private key, we have a special behavior. Most clouds don't require this, um, but we have to write that private key before we can run Terraform. And that's exactly what we have a space to do. So Cloud Validate is called before the Terraform runs, and we can stuff in this additional process to take the private key we've uploaded, set its uh, permissions correctly, and then write it into space. So here is where I know what that file name is, and so I'm doing that substitution here. Uh, if I had a token or something like that, I would, I'll would i show you how we do that process next. Right now, I'm just doing the minimum I need to get this running. And you'll notice these are changes that have to be made in conjunction. So we have our um, Terraform init file over here. Let me slide it over here. We have the resource file that we're building over here that references that. Those are used together and changed together. So I need to be uh, uploading them, which is why we do this as infrastructure as code. And we actually have a tool, a uh, path for that tools uh, bundle and upload that'll take care of that upload process. So it looks like that's going up fine. Our new Oracle pieces are, are in place. And if we come back over to resource brokers, we should be able to now add our Oracle, Cloud Oracle Resource Broker. It looks like my icon choice didn't stick. It didn't come in correctly. That's not the right icon. It's this icon, Cloud, to fix there. And you'll see it's already expecting there to be a required key. I'm just going to put foo in here or something like that. I have a script that'll upload the actual key uh, from DRPCLI. Normally, I would paste this in. I'm not going to call this. Uh, that broker, I'm going to call this training one, uh, training one, because that's our, this is our first 
uh, broker. Terraform is right. Broker base is the initial pipeline. Oracle key looks great. And let's make this uh, distinctive from that perspective. And what you'll see is it's going through. One of the nice things that we've done is even when you create a broker, which will stay in work order mode and all the broker requests are work orders, we're using a pipeline to do the setup and then it's going to automatically flip over to work order mode so that it can be operated correctly. So here's training one. This is the uh, system we've built. It's in work order mode. We have the parameters uh, coming in and getting set. I'm going to go ahead and run my script to set that uh, parameter in the right place. Let's see, it's going to be in the profile, training one. And here is our private key parameter. Uh, and it should be set correctly, yep, to my nice private key. So now that I've done those pieces, I'm actually ready to use and exercise this resource broker. Remember, we're just doing the Terraform plan with only that one minor modification, and it should do exactly what we were expecting it to do before, um, which also means, so I, I need to get just one more change I'm going to make. This is called training zero. Uh, let's not call this training zero, but training one, so the names match. Good, so now my Terraform plan should create training zero in the system. Got to upload that change again. Don't forget to do that. Very exciting. So now that we've got those processes going, I can come back over to Digital Rebar and use this training one broker, which means creating a cluster. Uh, let's see, I'm going to call it test one. Can't call it training one. That would be a naming conflict. I'm going to pick the training one broker. That looks great. I'm going to start this cluster based pipeline. It doesn't matter what the count is. Remember, we're not picking any of this up. That would be something I would try next. And uh, we'll make this purple also and use the home icon. So now when we go through, the system's going to go ahead and start provisioning that. The first thing it's doing in cluster provision is actually creating that work order. So if we go over to the resource broker, and uh, I'm expecting it to fail, so behind the scenes it's failing, and that's okay. Here's our training one resource broker. If we look at the activity for that, this is the work order that was just created, and we can look at the work order. And you can see that it ran through and failed, stopped at the Terraform Apply. So we can jump into this and find out what happened. And th at this point, you'll see we've actually gone in and we started going through the process. And you can see exactly what, what's going on. Error, uh, could not create compliant, did not find the proper configuration for the private key. So somewhere we uh, did not correctly update our private key configuration. Let's see if I can fix that quickly. So temp oracle private key. Here's our cloud validate. And could be that my pasting did not go right. Did I change it? Yep. See, you can see <laughs> Characters matter. Can't put the dash when it's an underscore. Very simple change. You can see I got good feedback from the system, which is important that there was a problem in that credential. We upload it again. And then I want to show you how we restart. So here, if I just tell this cluster to start running again, I can do the same thing from the activity page. Make it runnable. It's going to build a new work order. Instead of going all the way through Resource Broker, I can look at my work orders list. There's the work order it's trying to do. I see it's in Terraform Apply. I can look at the jobs and see what's going on. This is actually really promising. That job is still running, so it didn't fail quickly. So if I come here, you'll see it actually ran Terraform. So it's building that machine and doing the work exactly like I expect it to do. And that is excellent. Um, for, for what the system is. Now, there are times when you do need to do some debugging, and if you need to do some debugging, which I will show you how to do, I can take this uh, training and go over to params. If I add in the param rs debug, we'll just look for debug, this um, rs debug enable is general debugging that'll do a lot more detail in the execution of those plans, and that's really helpful. Um, there's also a Terraform debug plan. And if I turn that on, then it will store the plan file that's generated. Normally, we don't those have sensitive information in them, so we don't keep them. 
Um, in this case, if I want to keep those plans and turn on more debugging, I can just set those values on. And notice these are off by default, and I have to turn them on to make them go. But now, the next time I run it, I'm going to get additional information for uh, debugging purposes. And I'll show you where you can go find that as we get deeper into this process. So that looks really good. Oracle, Oracle over here uh, should be creating a training one for me somewhere along the lines. There we go. Look at that right on schedule. So here is the training one system that got created. And eventually it'll show up over here in my machines list as training one. Whew. All right. So that is step one of this process. Uh, and a really important phase here where we've actually just demonstrated the basic mechanics of giving, getting everything running. But that is not <laughs> what we want to have happen. What we really want to be able to do is control this Terraform in a much more generic way. Let's go through that process. For the next step in this process, we're going to go back and look at this Terraform plan that we've been building and recognize that it is not uh, sufficient in that it, it definitely has too many parts um, that we want to be able to decompose. So the first thing that we want to do is take um, the, our Terraform plan here, not this one, I'm going to hide default, this Terraform plan, and I want to split it into two pieces. Um, and then we'll reference both of those pieces over here um, from that, that perspective. So what we'd really like to be able to do is build a second piece that is the cloud Terraform, not a knit, but the machine piece. Let me make sure I'm following our conventions, cloud wrappers, templates, um, instance is what we're going to call this, not machine. That's good. So this is the instance file over here. So we're doing the initialization of the instance, and we're going to take this file and save it as the Oracle instance. The Oracle instance file only has to have the instance information. That looks great. I do want to open the init file and take out the pieces that I didn't need. There's init. So this is, this is really not a big stretch. What we've done is we've split this file into two different into two different pieces and literally what happens with the terraform plans here is when you run them it stitches them together in order so you can stuff anything you want into this process even as you template it so if you have a custom uh, se sequence you can add in custom pieces by just creating a new new profile uh, and that is incredibly powerful because it allows you to do whatever terraform you need to do beyond this standardized process that we've put together for you. So in, in here, what we also can do, so the first thing we need to do is look and say, you know what, this is not standard. I need to put a template in there. And we have a standard one for that. So let's go in uh, and look at one of the templates that we already have. Um, the Amazon one or the Lin Amazon one's gonna be closer in this case. And what you'll see, uh, this is not, Oh, this is Amazon's metadata API. We're not, I'm going to go in and do this later. So if we're missing our cloud init file, it talks to the Amazon API and pulls that in. Oracle can do the same thing, but I'm not worried about it at the moment. Here, what we're really trying to do is take out this hard-coded value that's bad and replace it with a template substitution value. This is Golang templating um, and completely uh, standard for the way things go. And we're going to be doing this process over and over again with Oracle specific values in the rest of the template. In this case, this is digital rebars uh, specific values, and that will do exactly as we want uh, for the join up script. Everything else here is great. We're uh, locking the versions, and that uh, should give us a good persistent uh, Oracle init file. Whew. So over here, whoops, we need to, uh, the OCI over here too. I missed that piece. Uh, and one of the reasons I know that is, look, I'm, I'm looking back over here. Uh, for 
different clouds, they are all different. So different clouds initialize in different ways. I strongly recommend looking at some different initialization files to see which patterns that you want to pick up. This one for Oracle is pretty straightforward. Um, and including this local section is something that we have been doing more and more rather than trying to do it in the instance. Um, it creates a, a sort of a more clean, repeatable pattern uh, that, that uh, I really like from uh, separating out pieces that should be in the initialization from pieces that are in the instance. Okay, Whew. but that means we're not done with the Oracle provider. What we really need to be able to do is come back and say, you know what, I have all these additional pieces of data that do need to get defined in my system. And to do that, we've already defined some variables in parameters. So if I come over to Cloud Wrappers, this is work I've done in advance for you, and we have our different Oracle systems. Uh, if you look over here, I'm going to need the tenancy, OCID, and uh, that means over in, in the system, I already have that parameter, so I just need to tell it to replace the parameter, the param, um, and it knows <laughs> it's pretty smart, Oracle tenancy ID. Yay, Visual uh, VS Code. And I need to do the exact same thing over and over again. Let's see how smart VS Code is. Dot param. Looks pretty smart to me. And we're literally going to go through and replace these pieces with the accepted values. Now, private key, of course, we don't need to do that to. And then, because that's a hard coded value. OCI region. Uh, this is not actually OCI. This I almost missed that. O R A C L E. That looks much better. O R A C L E. Whew. All right. So now what we've done is we've put in these substitution values so we can create that. Uh, system. That looks really, really nice. I'm happy about that. Um, these parameters will just come in when I define that, but these are all required values now. If you remember when we looked at our resource broker over here, where's our resource broker? Somewhere. Um, our Oracle cloud resource broker, we have the option to specify required values. And so it is a smart thing to go back in and say, you know what, we are, we now require, here's our instance, we require these uh, values to be included. And that will prompt, the benefit is it will prompt the user to put these values in as we go. Excellent. And the general rule of thumb is anything that that you can't run the system with, um, you can you have to have defined to run the system, is a required value. And if possible, we like to provide safe defaults. Like for example, if I looked up the Oracle region here, params uh, Oracle region, this one has a safe default, and we can omit it. So I would put that in the optional category, but make sure I didn't accidentally leave it in there. That looks good. So now we've actually started to build things up and we can go in and take additional steps to build this, um, this cloud init and it'll pull it from the value. Let's go ahead and up. Oh, and one other thing. Uh, I took out some pieces here, there we go. Uh, since these are required values in our cloud validation script, I do want to make sure that I'm checking for them. So we are going to put these validations back to make sure because we can't start the system unless these are here. Uh, and we should include the Oracle private key, which is required. Excellent. So now when we run the system, we're going to check to make sure that those things are set 
for Oracle and will actually give users a helpful uh, warning if they're not set. So that is a nice improvement in usability. Now we're going to come back and upload these. That looks great. And we can do a little housekeeping in the meantime. Uh, this test cluster that we, we set up, we are going to remove it. So I'm going to clean up. When you run cleanup, you'll notice it's running the provision cloud destroy here, which is running a Terraform delete, and it should go back through and try to clean the system up. Um, <laughs> in the process of doing this, um, one of the mistakes I made is I just changed <laughs> the Terraform plans, and that makes Terraform really unhappy. And so I suspect our Terraform is going to say, hey, I'm, I'm really confused. No, so here's the debug output. Um, see how much more detail that you get. Uh, it's a lot of detail about the Terraform things. Um, and it's uh, asking me a whole bunch of questions saying, hey, I haven't defined information that I expect to have because we validated and said, oops, uh, not that's not kosher. So we've already made changes that, that um, are enforcing higher standards than we had before. And so let's, let's go ahead and do that uh, and get those injected into the system. We're going to build a brand new. Let's clear the UX cache. Excellent. Uh, and build a brand new broker. Uh, we'll call this one Training 2, so Oracle Cloud. Notice I got the icon fix too. We'll call this Training 2. And you'll see, uh, looks like I made some typos here, so let's fix that also. We use dashes as a standard in, in, in these names, and then it looks like I made the mistake of putting dashes in because I was copying things. And that also means we likely have errors in our initialization. Thank you, VS Code. You weren't as helpful as we thought. Thankfully, we caught that early. All right. Normal process here to go back through and debug, upload, and, and reprovision. And while we wait for that, I'm going to cat my uh, .oci config file. Nothing secret in here. And this is going to show me my user, my fingerprint, uh, my region. It's one of the reasons I like this private key approach. It, it means that I'm less likely to spill my, my tokens to you and showing you debug output for uh, this work. So. Kudos to Google for having this nice private public key thing. And we've already, since we already have a way to handle that um, in a secure way, it's, it actually works out pretty well uh, as a model. So once again, I need to clear my cache because that profile is, is being stored. Come back, create our training to, sorry, pick our Oracle Cloud Resource Broker, call it training two. That looks great. Now we're being asked. Now, because I've defined these variables, you notice before I knew they weren't defined because they were putting asterisks. These come in and they, I, they actually have help. I wrote help for them telling you where to go find information and some additional details on how all these pieces should work. So very powerful um, helpers from that perspective. And I'm going to go back through and copy over this information. So here's my user. You don't, you can't see all that, that of course, but let's see. Private key. Uh, let me upload that. I'll upload that later. We're just going to call it foo. The uh, OID over here. That looks great. Uh, sorry, that's the tenancy ID. Here's my OID. Tenancy and one of the things that we do have is there is a script to upload this information uh, from this config file. Let's see, and I gotta copy and paste things correctly. That looks like my tenancy, my fingerprint over here. So that you don't, we don't actually do this except when I'm experimenting. I already have a script to take care of it. And my Oracle region brings in a San Jose. That looks great, safe default. Uh, let's make this one violet, and we will pick uh, trophy. Save in here, 
I need to go in and set my key. So let me do that. Looks great. Systems are going. Uh, different, let's see if I look at the profile, training two. We have our parameters, tendency, oracle. That looks really good. So now if we were to come back and say, I'm ready to use this training two, I can build a new cluster, call it training one or training test two. That looks good. Pick my new resource broker. And this is a subtle but very important point. I have two resource brokers for the same cloud, the same Terraform plans. That means I can have different behaviors, different configurations, credentials, regions, with a, just by the broker name. And changing the broker name gives me that capability. Uh, let's keep Violet over here and Trophy. And go, go back through. Now, one of the, the dangers here is when we create this, this is going to fail at Terraform level because I did not change the machine's name to training two in that Terraform plan. So that's that's next steps for us, and I'm going to show you how that works. Um, I also haven't yet turned on debug for training two, so let me see if I can catch that and see where we go. So uh, we'll do two things at once. I'm going to go in to this instance data where we had training one, training here, training here, and make it training two so we can fix that bug. Obviously, hard coding <laughs> names in Terraform is bad. Um, it's part of the way Terraform is set up. And so I'll show you how we work around that. Um, in training two, we also want to come in, add the parameters for our debug pieces, because there's some information we want here. So uh, the Terraform plan debug and our RS debug. Uh, we're, I'm pretty confident we don't need the, to debug the code itself. We just need to debug the plan. So I'm going to leave that checked and uh, run from there. So here's our cluster. Cluster 2 failed as we expected it to because that, that plan um, had a problem with the name. I can actually check it for you while we wait for things to start. Um, oh, that's a different thing. Uh, oh, it says our Oracle tenancy OCID is required for Oracle. Um, oh, that was before. Let's see. Nope, it looks like I have another bug. Uh, let's see. Oracle uh, Tenancy OCID, Resource Training 2, uh, Profiles Training. Oracle Tenancy OCID. Let's see what mistake I made. Here's the validate. That looks fine. Aha! Typos, typos. There's our... That was the typo. Bundle and upload. So you might be asking, why do I bother with the settings and things like that? It's what, what we found from doing uh, this work is that if I can give you quick feedback that you're missing something before I try to make Terraform do the work, you're much less likely to have uh, bad Terraform. So that type of safety does help protect us and you from running a Terraform plan with the incorrect information. So it's nice to preload that. Um, and get exactly the feedback that we have going on here. You'll see here is our Terraform Apply. Let's see what happened with that. So here is Terraform Apply, and uh, let's see. It's telling us it doesn't like how we have split some strings in our configuration, uh, which is perfectly reasonable. There, we have some error in how our Terraform plan was set up, and this is a good time to show you how to find out what that plan looked like, because the plan isn't isn't here. And even if I was to look at my template rendering information, uh, what you'll see is that the plan is actually made up out of a couple of different parts, and it's sort of hard to find and test what's going on. So what we've done is when you run this, and we made a very deliberate choice, the Terraform plan that's being created is 
pushed back to the cluster that's creating it with the idea that you might have multiple clusters. So you, you want to be able to say this cluster asked for this Terraform work to be done. We're pushing the plan back to that Terraform, to that, that cluster. And what you'll see is we build a whole bunch of variables to make all this stuff work. And then here is the uh, plan that we wrote for this system. You can see my substitutions, they all look fantastic. Uh, you can see our local file, our substitution here looks really good. And then we actually have our OCI name where we're building the system uh, up. And somewhere in here, it has found a bad Terraform file. Now, the cool thing with this is that except for this, this uh, for Oracle, um, if this <laughs> this is sensitive information, if you're dealing with any other clouds and you turn on this feature, it will expose your security tokens. So be warned, um, do not set this debug plan. It is not secure. That's why it's all red eyeballs and scary. Um, but I can take this and I can literally now pass it into um, Terraform on my desktop if I want to troubleshoot from my desktop and it'll tell me exactly what's going on. The other thing that I want to be able to do from this list, uh, sorry, this is this is really helpful for my Terraform plan. If I want to see what the state file is. That is also stored back in the cluster. And if I go to my profiles and look at my cluster test here, oops, sorry, in my parameters, oh, Terraform's not running, so I don't have the state file. Um, I'm going to need a successful run to generate a state file. In the interest of uh, keeping this video short, I'm going to fix that, come back to you. All right, so I did the cut and pasting and the edits. I'll review them quickly with you. So in this case, uh, we are going back through. Um, it's very important to use this pattern. It allows you to substitute variables um, in the cluster definitions. Take my word for it. Just follow the pattern, please. Um, but it allows you to have defaults and then override the defaults. And in this case, you'll see that I've taken the availability domains, compartment IDs, source IDs, subnet IDs, and just pasted them in to make this Terraform uh, plan overridable. And then uh, we don't have to worry about the counts and things like that. That gets taken care of by the way we're wrapping this inside the machine object. Once this is done, you will never have to worry about it again, which is super nice. If you need to add Terraform stuff, you can just add a new component for the plan or, or modify this. Um, and most of this is already done for most major clouds and done for Oracle after this video. So here we've uh, gone through and done a loop for our authorized keys. Once again, pretty standard uh, user data I'd already done where I included the init script. And you'll notice I just went in and added the, uh, the broker uh, to include. So I, we could figure out what broker had created those machines. And that looks pretty good. Uh, if I go back into my cloud, I've now done all the work to map, do the mappings. I've done the resource name, and then I've also um, specified the pattern here where I'm using machines and letting machines call this instance. So let me show you what that looks like and then wrap up this video. Uh, I told you it'd be a long one, but I want you to walk through all of the steps and see how this, this is really built because um, there's a lot of pieces to get right uh, and the troubleshooting and understanding the process is an important part of the training. So here we've uploaded things. We can take training two. This looks really good. Um, and we should have all of our required parameters. Uh, actually, that's not true. We added in here an availability domain, which uh, I'm not sure if I have a default for. Let's see, availability domain here. I do. So this is okay. I don't need a, that's an optional uh, compartment ID. Let's look at for compartment ID. No default here. So if I go back over into my resource region, I can put here, but uh, compartment ID needs to be defined here. Assuming I can get my spelling right. That looks great. Shape, I know I have a default for, so I can uh, set that one, Oracle shape. 
Uh, one thing to remember, like a lot of clouds, uh, shapes are region dependent. Um, their shapes are not, but their images are. So the source IDs um, are region dependent. I do have a safe default for this region. So I'm going to just go ahead and put it here. Source ID and subnet IDs are user specific. So we're going to go back to Oracle slash subnet ID. You need to know a lot of stuff to provision uh, one of these cloud, one of these systems. And that looks pretty darn good. Um, what we should do here just to be consistent is go back and cloud validate and say, you know what, I also need these two things. So we're going to do the right stuff. So we're checking to make sure that we have all the data, as I said before, before we start the process. And I'm going to go ahead and bring those in, in just a second. All right, excellent. Upload the code again. I'm doing that off screen. And for this system that I've built, training two, we're going to just keep working in training two. So I'm going to go back over here, training two, and add in these additional pieces that I need to do the provisioning. Uh, which I have in my original uh, cloud Terraform file. So let's pull that up. That looks great. So build our build these parameters, add parameters, Oracle for ACLE, compartment ID, subnet ID, let's see, source ID shape and I'm just picking all of them. You can see the ones we have safe defaults for. That's really handy. So I just need to pull in my my own subnet ID, which I'm doing from the other file. And the my own compartment ID. Which is often the same as tenant, but uh, we could fix that in the script to make that optional. But for now, this is pretty straightforward. Everything is now updated. I should be able to go back to my activity thing and oh, this is in the resource broker. Try my cluster again and let it do that provisioning. So check our jobs. Uh, let's see, missing new line after argument. So some of my cut and paste was not sufficient. Um, at this point, we are just grinding, which means tweaking, testing, tweaking, testing. Uh, so I'm going to do that little bit of grinding, and I will show you it working to wrap up the video. I'll be right back. OK, so it didn't take very much tweaking for me to find the typos that I've made in this in this broker and, and get the broker running. Uh, and I've built, I've, I've built and destroyed the cluster because I want to walk you through the final process and show you what it looks like. So that includes in, in Oracle, I only get two machines, so all of these machines are terminated. We're going to build a new cluster from scratch. And if you're like, oh, I don't want to watch Rob cut and paste all that stuff anymore, again, you don't have to. This is what's exciting. So if I build a test three cluster and pick the Oracle, the training two broker I built, all the credentials and stuff I did were against the resource broker. I don't have to do with any of that for the cluster. It's already taken care of by the broker. So I can come in. Oracle only lets me create two machines, so I'm going to set that down to two. We're going to go ahead and make this one green. And we're going to go ahead and make it a dashboard. So that looks great. And we're going to build this cluster. So what's happening here is we're going back through. We're doing an uh, order, a work order to provision against the broker. So all this work is set. That looks great. The broker over here is can't see it doing anything because it's scheduled it as a work order. We've got this work order running. The work order has created a series of jobs. Let's go back to the work order. Uh, it's created a series of tasks that we can see. And then we're going to look at the current job, which is Terraform. Terraform is now doing the Terraform thing with all of the things, all the provisions, all the settings that I provided here. That looks great. It's doing the work. After it's creating the machines, it's going to 
do that post executive step that is built into the templates, the machine template that we have. So you will automatically get the machines created from here into Digital Rebar. So Oracle is going to create those instances in a minute. Test three, there you go. It's uh, told Terraform that it's done that work. So we've created the machine, the matching machines in Rack N. There's test three. And then once they're started in Oracle, because we've put the join up, it's going to join and then start the infrastructure pipeline. In this case, application base uh, is going to go through and do that work, pulling in the cluster data that we define in, in parameter three. So we have demos that show you how to build clusters and use the clusters. That wasn't my goal here. My goal here was to walk you through the process of going from a working Terraform plan to a fully functional uh, digital rebar bar Terraform decomposition, which is exactly what we did. So now you can go replicate this for any cloud infrastructure, any Terraform plan. If you have Terraform plans that look similar to this, you can actually take out the snippets, add them into your own resource plan, and add them into that process. You can see the machines are joining up in this case. Whew. This is a long video. I appreciate your patience and time if you made it here. Um, this is definitely going to be one you're going to want to go back through and, and check out what we did. Definitely look at the cloud brokers. Uh, the, let me show you the path. Uh, let's see, GitLab, provision content in here. The work that I did for this was entirely in the uh, cloud wrappers work. And you'll, we'll, you will see them. In, they're not here yet because they haven't been, haven't been submitted. But all those parameters and things like that will show up here for you to make an example of. Um, definitely something that will take a little bit of time for you. So I would budget um, a day to go through and, and build this and build it in a resilient way. But once you've done it, it will work very reliably um, across the, your cloud platform and be easy to extend uh, and use. Thanks a lot. Hope this video was helpful. If you have feedback for us, please, please let us know. Um, we want you to be able to run these processes yourself, and this training is part of that. So thank you.